Life is just a whole bunch of decision making. Uh, that's how I look at it. Life is always going to throw curveballs at you. It's always going to throw you problems, uh, and it's up to you to kind of make the decision and move forward. Um, and oftentimes, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You can always be like, "Oh, if I knew this information, I'd be I'd be doing this," uh, but you can't think of it like that. Uh, the way I like to think of it is, what is the information that I have available right now, uh, and I'll just make the best decision that I know. Uh, but for these big kind of problems in life, these big issues, these big ideas, you know, uh, what do you want out of life? Where do you want to go? How do you want to, you know, these type of things, which direction do you want to go? Some of these kind of bigger, heavier topics. I always like to think about, you know, reverse engineering, this idea that I kind of think about from the end backwards. Uh, so literally, you know, one of the first thoughts that I think about, I know this is dark and groom, uh, you know, groom and, and the rest of it and, you know, it's probably freaked some of you guys out, but I literally look at, I just picture myself or picture a scenario where there is a gravestone. Um, it's my name on it, you know, so I was born in 1989 and then there's going to be a date. I picture that. I, and, and to me, that is very uh, clearing. It's very crystal clear uh, and it's very motivating. I'm not, a lot of you people might not find that motivating, but to me, whenever I think about totality, uh, absoluteness. This is not forever. It makes my decision making for today a little bit easier, a little bit clearer. It makes it seem, okay, how do I want to spend my time? Because I've established that this is not going to be forever. Uh, there's very much an end to this. And then the picture of my gravestone, you know, it's, it's kind of like, okay. And, you know, I've, I've had some losses recently. Um, you know, which which is difficult, but, you know, we're all kind of going there. Um, the timing is all up for debate, whatever. Um, but I like to think of it like that. And so one of you guys actually messaged me who's like in, in your 60s, maybe even early 70s, and you left a comment and that, that comment was very near and dear to me uh, because it was a, is, is from a fella, you know, who, who listens to these videos um, and from a fella who's actually training still. You said that you've done pull-ups for like 50 years, ever since you were like 22 or 23. Um, and just that kind of set in motion a cascade of thoughts. Um, I started picturing myself at 67 years old. I started picturing myself at 80 years old. And then I started picturing you know, myself at 90 years old or whatever I'm going to live. And then I started picturing that you know, uh, gravestone. I started picturing, okay, how do I want to live my life? How, you know, what's Ivan going to be happy with when it's all said and done? You know, I brought up this idea yesterday that no one really cares, you know, whether you squat 140, 180, 220, 260, whatever the case might be, no one really cares. You know, unless you are setting world records, unless you are fully committed yourself to the whole you know, chasing world records. And we know what that kind of entails nowadays. Unfortunately, I kind of mentioned this yesterday. You can't, it can't really be done, you know, naturally, uh, it seems. It's very sad for me to say that. Um, I wish natural people could compete, but it just seems that way that, that we can't. And so when I, when I have that thought and I, and I know that I will never touch anything that's going to jeopardize my health, I'm never going to go down the line of, of enhancing my body, then automatically the very next thought is, okay, so... No, it's just a matter of, you know, what am I going to be happy with? How hard do you want to push this? I'm not going to, no one's going to know me in the sense of I broke this record or broke the record. I can't even break my freaking state record here. It's impossible, you know, because there's guys here who maybe are not natural or whatever the case might be. And so automatically I'm like, okay, so if, if I can't be the best, then it's, I'm, I'm going to be part of the rest of the 99.99%. And so uh, what does that look like when I'm 70? What, what would Ivan be at 80 years old? How happy was he going to be? Uh, with what numbers? Uh, and to me, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of contact with people, you know, at the end, end stage of their life. And, you know, some spoke, you know, words with very, very kind of heavy, you know, uh, heaviness to them. Uh, and, and the overall kind of feeling here is it's not, what you have achieved, how many millions of dollars you had, how many houses you have, how many Ferraris you had. Most of the time, man, people just say, oh, I've had this many kids and my wife has been here for like seven years. I've been married to her. Um, I have this friend, that friend. I lived here, that, you know, it's all kind of like relationship kind of based. And that's your true wealth in life. 
Um, and that really applies to anything, you know, whether you have $1 billion or you have the world record squat, that stuff doesn't really hold true uh, to somebody that's kind of in the later years of their life. Uh, there's something more valuable to, in, in all of this. Um, and so when, when I think about these things, I think about, okay, so it's not even, even about the destination here. It's not about, you know, what the final numbers are or <clears throat> how big my bank account can get or how many Ferraris I can, you know, fit into my garage or anything like that. It's all about the soul and the love um, and the love of your people and how, you know, how you love people back. Um, and then automatically it just becomes a journey. It, it becomes about the journey. It becomes how you want to live this life. Uh, to me, that is such a refreshing thought. It's such a palate cleanser. Uh, it precipitates all of this smoke. Um, it, it just settles all of this anxiety about, oh, I need to, you know, get 260 kilo on the deadlift in the next few weeks. Like all of these things become very, very small problems. It, they become very insignificant in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, if you think about your current problems and then you think about your tombstone, then you're like, or your gravestone, you think about, what are we talking about here? You know, it, it's, are we barking up the wrong tree? Um, and that doesn't mean that I get demotivated when I think about these things. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I get motivated without the anxiety of performing. So I really want to, you know, do the journey that I want. You know, that fella that did 50 years worth of pull-ups and he's still doing pull-ups, man, like that to me is success. He's healthy. He's still doing what he loves. You know, how many of these guys are there for the journey? You know, like a lot of these guys that you see that are you know, breaking records and whatnot, they're not there for the love of it. They're there for the destination, for the recognition, for the notoriety, for the money, for, for all this other stuff. I think there's a lot of us who just plainly love to do what we love to do. Like, you know, oh, Ivan, you know, squatting every day is not the best idea. Ivan, squatting two times a day is not the best idea. Man, it makes me happy. It makes me happy. Whether I squat three days a week, run Texas Method or 531 or whether I run the Russia Squat Program or Small of Junior, Whatever, okay, um, I might be 10, 15 kilos, of, you know, ahead. But how, will, will small of get me a 350 kilo squat? No, it might get me a little bit quicker. Let's just say that my method is really wrong. But in the grand scheme of things, I ain't winning anything, man. It's impossible to win anything here if you're natural. Uh, and then automatically I'm like, is, is it worth it for me to do something that I don't like to do? Just for a result that's 5 or 10 kilos ahead? Nah, man, whatever. Like if I'm committed to this for life and I want to do pull-ups until I'm 70, 75, I couldn't care less, man. I just want to enjoy the process, trust the process, do what makes me feel better and happier. And I've said to you guys that what I'm doing here is not for everyone, but it's certainly for me. It takes so many more boxes than just strength. Uh, I talked about soul, talked about my mind, talked about my mental health, talked about all these different things. I'm just a happier human being when I get to do what I love to do more often. Um, and so if you've kind of found whatever that, whatever that thing is in life that you love to do, don't let anybody tell you, oh, don't do it that much, man, because it's not good for you. You know, if, if you love it and it's a healthy thing, like if we're talking about fitness, health and fitness, man, <laughs> just do it, man. Just do it. Yeah, it's, it's all these people who are, destination focused, they, don't, they might not understand us who are journey focused. Uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I have these thoughts. Um, you know, a lot of the times you guys, you know, trigger kind of like an emotional response from me. And I, I thought about this fellow at 70. I'm like, man, that is pure wealth, man. That is just pure wealth. The guy loves to do this. And for me, man, I'd love to sit down with a guy like that and have a beer. More, much more than some of these guys who are top of the charts right now who are, you know, smashing drugs and who are chasing fame or whatever. This guy here is a purist. Okay, he's been doing pull-ups for 50, 50 years. He doesn't care about anything other than the love of doing it. Like, to me, that is just, I'd rather be in his, you know, on his table at the bar, drinking a beer with him, than somebody else who was just focused on, you know, the bottom line, um, billions, millions, Ferraris, houses, bank accounts, numbers on the squat bar. At the end of the day, man, <laughs> what are we talking about, man? What is this whole thing about? And to me, uh, you know, this might be kind of like a, 
you know, deep and meaningful and, and, you know, depressive kind of vibe to this video. But for me, man, like nothing, nothing makes it clearer. Nothing removes the anxiety out of all these life issues or some of these kind of like finite problems that we kind of deal with. Look at the bigger picture, man. I often think to myself, just zoom out, man. Zoom out. Stop looking at your logbook. Look at look at your your, your city, your your country, the world. You know, look at some of the bigger problems. All of a sudden, you're like, man, I got nothing to worry about. Just do what you love to do. You are blessed with so many different things. Just enjoy it. Um, and I know, you know, it, I've kind of touched on this before about goal setting and about chasing, pushing hard and whatnot. I think it's very, really, really important to kind of reverse engineer and, and see where you're headed. Um, you know, it's all good to have your face down, ass up, kind of working really, really hard. But I think it's really beneficial to look up and look around and be like, okay, what's this whole thing about? What am I doing here? And I guess philosophy as, as, as a discipline, as a, as a intellectual discipline, I guess, um, philosophy is about that. It's, it's, it's about stopping and thinking like, what, what are we doing all? Man? What are we all doing here, man? You know, I've, I've spoken to my friends many, many times before about career, career choices, you know, the hierarchy, the slippery slope, you know, oh, you know, there's another, there's a promotion available. You can, you can go for that and it's a bit more responsibility. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's very attractive. Uh, and a lot of people do do that. But what is, what do you want? What is your true, true passion? What is your true calling? What, like, don't worry about the destination. Worry about the journey today. You know, I've, it's a cliche thing, but tomorrow's not promised, man. It's literally not promised. And we don't know what date is going to be on that gravestone. Uh, we don't know anything. So you need to, like, enjoy what you're doing today. Um, sometimes I have these thoughts, but when, when this fella, when this fella uh, messaged me, man, it was, it was only a few lines, man, but, like, it, it just... Number one, it's incredible that there's a guy out there in his 70s, you know, working out. Um, I deal with people through my work who are 70 and they're like, man, they can't, they can barely walk, all right? Now, this fella's doing pull-ups. Now, I don't know if there's research on this and whether, you know, you know what I think about research. But if a guy can do pull-ups at 70 years old, man, there has to be like some sort of like indicator of the rest of his health. If you can pick up, you know, grab a bar, and lift yourself up at seven years old, at 80 years old, man, the rest of you is healthy. I know, like, if you can do 10 pull-ups at 70, I know, like, you are a healthy individual. I look after 60-year-olds, man, who are, like, circling the drain, man. 60. They've completely wasted themselves in 60 years of life. And then there is a guy at 70, 75 who's doing pull-ups. How sick is that, man? That is proper motivation. That is pure love for the game. That's a purist. And that motivates me like crazy, man. It just makes me think like, I don't have another five years of lifting. You know, some people say, oh, the peak of, of power lifting, the peak of strength is, you know, uh, mid thirties or forties or whatever, maybe 45. That's if you are destination oriented, man. But if you love to do this, regardless of the results, you're still gonna get a pump. You're still going to get that response, that local response. You're still going to get those endorphins released. You're still going to feel the same way whether you're lifting 500 kilos or you're lifting 250 kilos or 150 kilos. The, the endorphins are going to be the same, man. The bar, how many plates it has on it, that's the only thing that changes. And if we've already identified and, 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 and agreed upon that we are not chasing world records here because we want to stay healthy, then all these plates and all these things is irrelevant. It's, it's, it's the journey. It's how you feel. Uh, I don't know, man. That, you know, like I'm, I'm doing two squatting sessions a day, man, and I'm loving it, man. Like, literally, I'm loving it. I couldn't care less whether this is effective or not effective or whatever. Like, once again, like, I'm not an Olympian. I'm not a paid athlete. I'm not going to set any world records here. This is a passion. This is making me healthy. This is making me feel good. And if you are feeling the same way, remove that anxiety from, from this mix. Oh, when somebody says to you, how long have you been training? And Ivan goes, I've been training seven years. And I squat 210 kilos. And then some guy will rock up next to you and be like, how long have you been training? 
and he says, I've been training six months and he's squatting 200 kilos. So a bloke that's been squatting six, six months is squatting the same as me and I've been squatting seven months, uh, seven years. <laughs> so automatically you're like, well, oh, shit, man. Like when you get to seven years, you're going to be squatting five tons, right? Because I've wasted a whole lot of my time and you, you've done all of this in six months. And so from that conversation, from that, you know, cascade of thinking, all of a sudden you feel inadequate, all of a sudden you feel uh, crap, you feel like you're weak, you're genetically uh, uh, not gifted or whatever the case might be, or you're dumb because you're, 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 you're not doing the right sets of reps, or all of a sudden you're comparing and you're like feeling crap. I don't think you should think that. I think, number one, <laughs> I hate going back to this man, but you don't really know what people are doing, okay? You don't really know. I mean, like you just don't know what people are doing. That's number one. That's, that's just a constant. Number two, focus on yourself, focus on your own journey and focus on the love of it. Once again, the bloke that's doing 300 kilos and the bloke that's doing 200 kilos, when they set a PR, they feel the same way. You know, it's just only so much endorphin you, you, endorphins your body can release. It's not like, oh, if you lift... 500 kilos, that is like 10 million times better feeling than when you lift 200 kilos for the first time. No, man, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Your body goes, cool, man. That's a good job. That's the best we've ever done. Here's a couple of points worth of endorphins. We're going to feel good for a couple of couple of minutes and then we're going to take that shit away and you're going to have to go back to work to you know work on this shit again. That's all this is, man. Once again, if we are not chasing records, screw how many plates there are. Just focus on the journey, focus on your progress and be happy. And don't sacrifice your health, man. You know, I don't want to talk about this because it's not something I like to talk about other people and whatnot. I'm not that kind of channel. I'm not that kind of individual that talks about other people and other people's misfortunes and whatever. But, you know, recent, recent developments in, in the fitness community have, have been troubling. Everyone's making videos about this and I don't want to get sucked into it. But I just want to say that it's not going to go well. Uh, the next 10 years, I think there's going to be a lot of premature deaths in, in our community, if you will, as a whole, because of people abusing certain substances. Um, and I just, I just feel, you know, I, I just feel with the following that I have, and so many guys of you, you, you guys are messaging me and saying how you get inspired, you know, what I'm doing. I feel like there's a degree of there's a degree of responsibility um, and I need to kind of make my stance clear on this issue so everyone's kind of aware of it. I am anti-drugs. I am anti-doping. I am anti-PEDs. Um, I'm anti all of that. If it's not natural, I am against it. I want everyone listening to this to be healthy, to think about health number one. Health is the first step and performance is the second step, increasing your performance. If you are trading in that base that I just said, then I don't think it's a, it's, it's, it's a right decision. So if you are 16 years old, 20 years old, and you're thinking about doing things, you know, trading in a couple of points of health for a couple of points of, of performance, I just want to make my stance clear and say it is the wrong thing to do. Zoom out. Think about the bigger picture. Think about your gravestone. Think about what you want to be on that chair when you're sitting down and looking back at your life, think about some of these heavier thoughts and I think you're going to head in the right direction mentally and you're going to make the right decision. Too much of a black screen, guys. I have to cut this off. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.